Hello, sports fans. It's me, Sportsman Z, Bob Zolke. And today, we're going to talk a little bit about making your own um, baseball simulation board game. And we're going to get to that in just a second. <laughs> So, um, ever since I was a kid, before I even, my first simulation baseball game was Stratomatic. But even before I bought Stratomatic, I tried to make my own crude version of my own baseball game. And as I recall, it just involved two six-sided dice. Um, but of course that wasn't based on any particular player. Um, there's only very little you can do on it because you only have from a range of 2 to 12 for hits and walks and you to simulate a real batting average of like 300 there's only so many hits and even an on base percentage of like 350 there's only so many hits and walks you can put between um, between uh, 2 and 12, the values of 2 and 12. So um, that was, it's a good thing that I discovered Stratomatic and actually my father um, introduced me to Stratomatic. Um, he never really, I don't think he ever really played Stratomatic, but he took me to, um, he took me to the mall to KB Toys and Hobby and we found Stratomatic Baseball and that's how I got started with that. So it's a good thing I discovered that because that um, does, I believe, and to a great um, to a great degree, I think it does simulate um, real baseball. Um, at least much better than just using two dice and you know um, putting values in there and then having it apply to every to every single player. What are your qualifications? Ah, well, I tend to truly are. I'm a graduate of the Harvard Business School. I travel quite extensively. I lived through the Black Plague, and I had a pretty good time during that. I've seen the Exorcist about 167 times, and it keeps getting funnier every single time I see it! Not to mention the fact that you're talking to a dead guy! Now what do you think? You think I'm qualified? But have you ever tried to, like, even after discovering um, a game like Stratomatic or APBA, whatever it was for, for in your particular case, have you ever decided to try to make your own game? Now, um, I have, even after that, I tried to make my own games. Never really worked out very well. Um, never really caught on. I mean, I've had concepts, and I'm going to discuss two concepts in this video. And really, these are just ideas um, for you in your own use um, at home. If you want to make your own game up and play it um, just for your own private use, or even if somebody's out there and has the resources and the time to expand on my ideas, that's fine too, because I don't have the resources and the time to do that. Um, so, and really the board... The board game market is actually drying up and it's not what it used to be when I was a kid. Um, making your own board game of anything would have been probably far more possible and doable uh, 40 years ago, 30, 40 years ago. But now it's, it's not. But if there's somebody who wants to give it a shot, you know, hey, knock yourself out. I'm just going to give you a couple of... Uh, uh, ideas in this video, um, but they aren't, uh, you know, and you can expand on it, different, you know, make it a little different. In fact, you're going to have to um, come up with um, other aspects of it anyway, because I'm just going to come up with the base idea for you. So, um, but I've, I've tried to do that in the past, and I have been somewhat unsuccessful in doing it. And one, I think one hurdle that you're going to run into 
is that your frame of reference is whatever game you played. So if you played Stratomatic a lot, that's your frame of reference, and the game seems to emulate Stratomatic a little too much, uh, possibly. And you really need to think outside the box. You need to think outside the box and say, I need something completely different than Stratomatic. Uh, not only for legal reasons, but just you don't want the game to be like somebody says, oh, this is just uh, another version of Stratomatic. Um, now, that having been said, I did make my own cards for Stratomatic as well when I was a kid. Cards of myself, cards of my friends, um, cards of fictional players. Uh, if you're out there listening to this video and you know me, you know that I've made up uh, people like JB, just JB. He was a shortstop one. Um, oh no, that was Vacuum Johnson. Vacu uh, Vacuum Johnson, JB, Pete, um, Pete Perkins. Pete Perkins was a good one. But anyway, I, I, I'm getting off the, off the mark here. But I would make up my own players for Stratomatic, but I would try to make up my own games as well. But like I said, they seem to emulate Stratomatic a little too much. Um, and I think that a lot of players would run into that. People who would try to make their own game. If you liked APBA, you, your, your game might emulate APBA a little too much. But, um, you know, you want to try to think outside the box and get something that you think is doable and, um, and yet is your own game. And that would be a lot of fun if I had the time to do it. I would do it because here's another aspect of doing that. Once you come up with the concept and the idea and you start to put pen to paper and you start to make player cards, then you have to do, um, you have to run beta tests of probably hundreds of batters and hundreds of pitchers just to make sure that it's somewhere in the realm of doable and that it would somewhat mirror reality for those particular players and then once you do that you get you maybe get an idea of how other batters should look and how other batter and pitcher cards should be similar with stratomatic when i made my own players once i played you know hundreds of stratomatic games i got an idea of what a 260 batting average card should look like, what a 300 batting average card should look like, etc. So um, I would, you know, I would make the cards based on that, what um, the uh, batting average would have been, how many home runs, whatever, and you, you can kind of eyeball it and make the cards to the game. But when you're making your own game, and especially if you come up with a completely different concept than Stratomatic or APBA, then you have to think to yourself, um, you know, I have to test this and make sure that this is doable. You don't want somebody like, uh, you know, um, I don't know, uh, Walker, uh, what's his name, for the Marlins. You don't want him hitting 400. So, um, you, you need to run these guys through many, 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 many tests to make sure that they do what they're supposed to do. So that having been said, let me show you two ideas that I've come up with, uh, two concepts, two basic concepts, but you would have to expand on it if you wanted to make your own game based on my ideas. And there's probably thousands of ideas and thousands of ways to make games. If you've, if you've played games like Status Pro or Payoff Pitch, you know that there are many different kinds of concepts and ways to come up with it. But here are two different ideas I, I haven't seen or anything really that close to it. But maybe there is a game out there that you know of that is uh, close to these concepts. That's fine, um, but uh, you know, just two ideas, so let's get into those. All right, so here is two cards that I've made up. One is of Bryce Harper and one is of DeGrom. And uh, what I've done here is I've made the pitcher, you can see, 
has his name and then he has INF. What I call that is influence. So this is the influence of the pitcher on a 20-sided dice. And I've got 13 and 9. The 13 is when he is sharp and he's fresh and he's just starting the game. So in other words, DeGrom in this case would um, have an influence over the batter on a roll on a 20-sided dice of 1 to 13 and the batter would only have his influence would only be from 14 to 20 if DeGrom was fresh. Once he gets tired, starts to tire out, he, his influence is only 1 to 9. And of course, you would make, you would make that depending on the pitcher. Somebody like, um, uh, oh, I don't know. You know, um, somebody like uh, on the, um, on the um, White Sox, Lopez. Um, Ronaldo Lopez, his influence might be only like one to eight or something if he was fresh and maybe one to six if he were one to five if he was tired. So you would have, you would make it according to the type of pitcher, how good they really are. And now you see what I did is I've got from three to 18. So three, um, these would be results that would be based on Three, let me see, let me roll it, move these back. Based on three six-sided dice. So if we roll the dice, first we're gonna roll the 20-sider. And uh, this is a 14, I'm gonna call it a 14. So anyway, you can see this is outside of DeGrom's influence. So you've got Harper is going to, we're gonna look at Harper's card for the roll. And that is a nine, uh, 10. So that's a 10 on three dice. And you can see the roll is a strikeout for Harper. So now you've got, let's do it again. That was a 12. It's probably, it's off camera, but uh, I'm telling you it's a 12. So this is DeGrom's influence. And you can see we rolled a uh, 7, 8. And it doesn't matter, you know, I mean, these are different colored dice, but it doesn't really matter in this particular scenario, the way I'm doing this version of a game. It doesn't matter which one you read first, second, whatever. You just add them all up. So this was an eight. So you can see on the ground, that's a strikeout. Now we roll it again. You've got an influence of two. So that's still the ground. And this, that's a roll of 10, 15. So on a roll of 15, that's a strikeout for DeGrom. He strikes out Harper again. Now you can see Harper's not having much of a chance of getting a hit here. And if you look at the card, you can the cards, you can see that he wouldn't have much of a chance. Now I don't know if that's accurate. There's a 1, so DeGrom's influence is still a 1. And that's an 11, 12, 30, 14. So on a 14 on um, DeGrom's card, he walks Harper. So that's the first time Harper's even gotten on. If we do it again, you have a roll of 12. So still DeGrom's influence is there. And then that's a 6-8. That's an 8. And that's a strikeout. Now let's see what happens when DeGrom is tired. This is later in the game. DeGrom is still pitching, but he's tired. And again, you would have to determine when or how or why DeGrom would get tired. I'm not going to go into that right here because I haven't even thought that out. I'm just doing the basic concept. So now you've got a two. You still got a roll of two. So he's still, his influence is still there. And that's a roll of 13. And that would be a single. So he gives up a single to Harper, which would be believable if he were tired. That's a six. He still got, his influence is still there. That's a, that's a, a left 12. So 12 is a strikeout. So anyway, you get the idea. This is, uh, you know, this is one concept that you could have. Now, it was sounding great, but I could have used a little more cowbell. Another concept that I thought about is using the, um, we'll take these off, is using just the three dice, the three six-sided dice. And let's assume for the sake of argument here that the the white dice is the first number, the second dice is the uh, second number, and the, and the green dice is the third number. The red dice is the second number, and the green dice is the third number. 
So right here, this would be, and if you read it like a batting average or on base percentage, this would be 561, which would put the um, batter, whoever it was, way outside of the range of being able to get on base or get a hit. So now what you would do, and this would, see, this concept is nice, but it would require you to make thousands of cards. But we've got Bryce Harper versus the Mets. And I only put down four pitchers. I put down DeGrom, I put down Syndergaard, I put down Mats and Diaz. And I just made up these batting averages and on-base percentages. You can see versus DeGrom, it's 210 and 290. So that's a 210 batting average, a 290 on-base. Versus Syndergaard, it's a 200 batting average and a like a 310 on base or a 300 on base versus mats it would be a 220 batting average and a 310 on base but again these are just made up you would have to research them and find out what they really would be now you roll the dice and you've got us this is a, a roll of 6 six eleven. so this would be outside of a walk or a bat or a hit range so he's out and then, of course, you would have to have an out chart, uh, maybe even an out chart for Harper specifically or just an out chart in general. It would depend on how many, how in-depth you want to go for the game. So this is a roll of 541, so that would be outside of the range of any of these. That's a roll of 423, uh, so that would be outside of the range. And you can see... There's not much of a chance of him getting on. Uh, that's a 421. Now there is, that is a roll of um, 143. So a 143, you can see it falls below 210, 200, 220, and 240. So he would have a hit off of any one of these four guys. But you see, we had to roll five or six times just before we got, even before we got a hit. Now, I don't know. Maybe that works. Maybe that's fine. But again, you would have to take this card and you would have to play him against these types of pitchers. You know, you would have to do the batting average and everything and, and bat Harper against these guys that many times just to see if that was, um, if that's a doable um, way of doing it and of course if you like if you have DeGrom and then he rolls a 2-9 uh, well a 2 nine zero. well you can't have a 2 nine zero, I suppose so um, if he had a uh, a 2 let's say a 266 266 that would fall within it's it's larger than his chance of getting a hit but he would get a walk off of the Grom. So, um, I mean, you get the idea. I don't know how you would, um, and you can expand on that and whatever, but those are just a couple of ideas I would have for making a game of your own. So let's, you know, bring back these other cards just to give you a look at them again. These are a couple of ideas, but of course, you know, you can come up with your own ideas, things that you would do. But those are just a couple of thoughts that I had on it really quick for putting this video together. So what did you guys think about that? Do um, you like those concepts? Do you think you could, um, you would, might want to make your own game and, and build on those concepts? Or does that give you the motivation to make your own game? Like I said, I've tried several times and nothing really ever um, just, you know, nothing ever really clicked and I never really went through with a full scale model of a game um, and beta tested it and, um, and, and used it. I've, I've come up with basic ideas like these, but I've never really expanded much beyond it. So I, most of the time I just stick to the games that are, you know, actually in production and, and out there uh, to use. But those are just some thoughts I had, and uh, I'd like to hear from everybody out there. Have you ever made your own game? Have uh, you made a game that's good enough that you think that you have, um, that you've played it a lot and you thought that it's, 
you know, every bit as good or nearly as good as some of the other games like APBA, Status Pro, Stratomatic, um, Payoff Pitch? Or have you, like me, thought about it, started to do it, but it never really took and you just um, gave up on the idea entirely and just played the games that you have bought and that you know well? I'd be interested to hear, but I just thought that would be an interesting video to put together and put up um, on a Saturday, and uh, we'll see. We'll see how it goes. Um, and by the way, I want to point out, if anybody out there wants to use my ideas and expand on them, I have no problem at all with that. Go ahead, do it. Um, I would love to see something based on one of my ideas in a game uh, that somebody could show me and um, tell me how to put it together and, you know, hey, maybe you got more time and more resources than I do to do that. So, uh, just an interesting idea to throw out there for everybody, but for right now, that's it for me. Sportsman Z, Bob Zolke, signing off.